it's Lucy from My Crazy Craft Life and I am here today with the design team post for Scrapping for Less. Today I'm going to be making this shadow box card and we're going to go through all the steps and I promise it's really simple. But the, I'm using the July 2020 Flavor of the Month card kit and I'm using a few different components from different areas. Um, the watercolor paint set we got with the banana split level. The dyes were included with the banana split level. The watery tropics paper and stamps from the watery tropics collection is collection number three. And then collection number four is the trop in the tropics paper and stamp. And then the flowers by Doris and the sequins by Doris were all a part of collection number four. So I'm going to start out with the watercolors and I cut down a piece of paper to four inches by five and a quarter and I stamped that watery tropics, or no, I'm sorry, Aloha stamp by Scrapping for Less on it and that is what I'm going to watercolor and that's going to be the inside panel of the card that's going to be in the background for the shadow box. Now there's a lot of things after I made the card that I decided would be better to do so I'm going to tell you those things as we go along so that if you make one you can decide if you want to do it beforehand as opposed to me after the fact and to kind of give you some suggestions on things that worked and didn't work. My first thing is the watercolors are really actually really good I mean especially if you're not if you're not into watercoloring and you don't have a big expensive set this is a great set to try it out and see how you like it you know mix the colors get different shades see how kind of watercoloring works I am not a great watercolor so do not you know think that anything I am saying about it as far as you know they're I'm sure they're not the best, most expensive, you know, watercolors that you could buy. But like I said, to kind of get a feel for it, I think it's great. And that's always has been my thing with Scrapping for Less kits. I think they're great for stash building and they just give you a lot of different products that you can try at different times and decide if you like it and decide if that's something that you want to do and, you know, get as opposed to buying a bunch of something and then never using it like I have done many times in my life. But with this collection I have, or not this particular collection, but just scrapping for less kits in general, I've been able to try a lot of different things and some of them I really liked and I did buy more of it. And then some things I tried it and I realized that I did not like that and so I was not going to do that again. Now the only thing I would say about the paint set, it really has nothing to do with the paints, it's more about the brush. I would suggest using a different brush, um, a better brush. I, I don't even mean an expensive brush, but this is just a very, it's, it's not a very good brush. I mean, that's all I can say about it. But if you just get a little bit better brush, I mean, if you have some at home to use or to even like go to the store and you can buy a decent one for a buck or two. But it's just, it's not really pointy. It's hard to get into the small areas with it. So I really, I would definitely suggest using a different brush when you're doing this. Um, I was able to do it with this. There's some areas of that were really tiny that were hard to get into because of how the brush is, but otherwise, like I said, I made it work. I wanted to use what was in the kit and what we, we get as part of the kit to show that, yeah, you really can use the stuff and you don't have to have anything outside of that really. Um, you know, like you get the die, so obviously you're going to need some type of die cutting machine, but beyond that, that's about it. Um, after I finished painting this, I or watercoloring it, I used the heat gun to dry it off because I was impatient and I wanted to do this. So I sat there for quite a while getting that together. Now we're going to get to the card and I slowed this down because I really want you to see how to make this card. The watercoloring, especially because I'm not an expert, you're not learning a ton from me watercoloring, so I sped that up. And I took two card bases. So these are just regular A2 size card card bases. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And on the first one, on one side, you're going to cut off a half an inch. And that's all you're doing to that piece. The next piece, so you have the four and a quarter um, score line in there already because mine's a card. Now if you were doing this with a regular sheet of paper, you would obviously cut it in half 
and then you would have five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and you're going to score it at four and a quarter right down the center you're going to score it at a half an inch so a half an inch was that first one I did and then the four and a quarter and then the second or the third one is four and three quarter inches and that's all the scoring that you're going to do now this part is a tip that I actually got from Jennifer McGuire on that half an inch score line so the first score line that you put on this card you're going to just cut off a little sliver it's not even an eighth of an inch just a, a sliver of it and she said it fits better and I didn't have any problems fitting so I'm guessing it that it worked well then you're just going to fold over and score all of the score lines and just make sure that you get a nice clean edge with all of those now like I said if you're not if you start out with just one single sheet of paper you're going to cut that in half at five and a half inches so you're cutting it from the long ways from the 11 inch side and then you will have the two sheets you're going to score that first one at four and a quarter and then cut off that half an inch and then the second one you're going to score at a half an inch four and a quarter inches and then at four and three quarters and then like I said you just fold them all down and you're going to kind of make that box now the portion between the half an inch and then the four and a quarter inch is going to be the panel that you see that frame that's going to kind of make the frame for the shadow box and that's what you're going to use a die to cut out um, or however you know you're going to get that frame in there that's where you want to make sure you do that then you're going to take some double-sided adhesive and put it on that half an inch section you're going to butt that up to the score line don't go over the score line but you want it right next to the edge make sure it's all lined up and then just simply fold it over and that's going to create where how it's going to pull it forward now one of the things I'm going to tell you with this is to make sure I did not do this so make sure that you put tape on that whole half an inch don't go over the score line with the double-sided tape but you definitely want to make sure because when I pull my cart open it kind of pulls away from the the other side the part that it's taped to just a little bit it doesn't make that much big of a deal but I'm just letting you know to make sure that you get the tape on there really good then I'm going to cut down the panel to fit in there and I'm just going to kind of figure out where I want it and make sure that it's going to line up with the frame that is in the other part of the card and then I'm just going to adhere that down so whatever you end up using you're just going to make sure that that um, is going to fit inside of the area now the other thing that I would do if I made this card again would be to use a piece of acetate and put it behind the frame because I think it would be cool to kind of look like you were looking in like a fishbowl type thing or glass you know you were looking behind glass I just think that would be kind of cool that's certainly not something that you have to do so I'm just going to adhere that down in there like I said and I kind of measured it where it was going to be and where it needed to be in there and that's I'm just kind of putting it down to make sure that it fits in there and adheres in there really well and then I used a lot of the tape because it was from the watercoloring it was a little bit warped then I'm going to make some of the sentiments because I decided I wanted to fishtail a couple ends and have them coming out of the frame like on the inside of the frame so I stamped a couple of the sentiments from that watercolor set I put those on the side and now I'm going to be working on the front and the front I cut down a piece of the pattern paper from collection number four and I took a piece of the watercolor which I ended up changing um, to another piece from that fourth set and then I did take a piece of the water paper from the third set and I'm going to cut that out with the die now throughout this process my big shot died it broke and so I could I was actually planning on putting using that frame that I used to cut the frame out and to cut out a piece of paper with that frame cut out and then add that into the inside of the card to give it some color but I didn't have anything large enough since my die machine crapped out to be able to cut it but I did have my sidekick so I did use this for the sentiment on the outside of the card so I used that small die that was part of the die set that is in this kit and I stamped the sentiment on there 
And then I am going to tape that yellow paper that I picked out from collection number four onto the front panel for the card. And then I'll just snip that edge off. That's a little too long. And that's just about two inches, the panel that I made for the layering panel on the top. And then the die, like I said, I cut that out and stamped the sentiment. Then I'm going to take the silhouette. I know what it's called this time. Somebody, somebody told me, which I was grateful for, because for whatever reason it was not coming into mind. And I stamped that on the front of the card or for the panel that's going to go on the front of the card as well. So here is the sentiment I'm going to put on the inside. And see, I did not tape it down yet because it's easier doing everything that you want to do before you tape this down to the back. It's not that you can't do it, especially if you're not going to put the acetate there. You certainly could put it in there, but it's much easier when it's not taped down yet. So then I'm just going to put some double-sided adhesive on the edges of that, and I'm going to put the sentiment strips on the inside of the frame. That way those sentiments are going to kind of pop up a little bit more than the background panel. The next thing we're going to do is tape down the back side. So the portion with the frame, you are going to put double-sided tape not on, not past the four and three-quarter score line. So all the rest of it from the four and three quarter score line all the way down. And then you are going to fold it in half, but you're going to fold it in half at the four and a quarter mark. So you're going to have that half an inch in between there, and that's going to be the portion that's going to pop up. Then I'm just going to add my panel here. I'm going to add my sentiment. I'm going to put some flowers from collection number four, and then I'm going to use some sequins from collection number four on there, and that it will finish up this card. Oh, and then I do use some of the enamel dots from collection number three that I'm going to put right in the center of the flower once I get it down there. And that is pretty much it for this card. So like I said, it, it's a very simple card. I think it you have tons of possibilities that you can do with this, and it's, it's really pretty simple. It's a few couple score lines, and then just making sure that you're getting the tape in the right spots. And like I said, you just have so many possibilities. You can use circle dies and square dies and just anything that you want to make that frame. And I think layering it up using the same die to create a, um, like with pattern paper around the frame would have been really cool too if my machine didn't crap out and quit working. And so this is where we are. So anyways, that's it. That's my card for today. I hope everybody is staying happy and healthy. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you check out a couple of their videos and subscribe to the channel and head over to Scrapping for Less and check out what they have there in the store. Thank you. I hope everybody has a great day. Take care.